So hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is an unexpected one because I haven't told you about it yet. Listen, I'm the kind of person who I get nervous and I'm afraid to speak something into existence before it happens. Mr. Microphone, could you not? So this isn't really a surprise to me because I've, I've known this is gonna happen or we, I've been working towards this for a while, basically. I wanted to keep it a complete secret until it was done and finished. <sighs> So today's video, I can't believe I'm saying this. Today's video is a chat with the absolutely gorgeous Paula Lazaro. Now guys, you know her as Princess from The Walking Dead. I'm not even gonna try and explain because you're gonna watch the video and the interview anyway. But um, yeah, I'm so happy and so proud and just so fucking excited to share this with you guys. Um, Paula, if you are watching this again, I've said it like a million times, but thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. I don't, th I don't take it for granted, and it means, it means an awful lot. And yeah, so I recorded this after I did the interview. I did the interview last night actually, and I'm still, I'm still buzzing. I'm not gonna lie, I'm still like jumpy and nervous. I'm so excited to get to share this with you guys. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did getting to talk to her. And yeah, just there we go. Hi, can you see me? I can. Can you see me? Yes. Um, How are you? I'm good. I'm a bit nervous. I'm not gonna lie. I'm excited Why? though. I'm a bit <laughs> of a fan. Just, just a little bit. No, don't be nervous. I'm, I'm like super chill, and there's no need to be nervous. In Ireland? Ah, yeah. I am. Yeah. I was gonna try to come um, November fifteenth around there because there's a tattoo convention over there in Dublin. Yeah. And uh, my friend who's a tattoo artist, he's hosting it. Because he's he like, I guess he's like famous in the tattoo world. I don't know much about the tattoo world. Um, I have a couple of tattoos. But um, but uh, his name is Paul Booth. And he's going to host the event. And uh, it's in Dublin. And they were like, oh, maybe, you know, we asked if maybe I could come over. And like, I, I just was trying to see if I can go. But I don't know because of work. Because of COVID. Yeah. Um, I Are know, you in Dublin? No, I'm in Limerick. So I'm down okay. the southwest. But I go, like, if there's ever conventions or concerts, it's always Dublin. We um, opened up international travel and all that. So, like, you should be, well, maybe not with work. but Yeah, that's that's the only thing. Can I call you Katie or Kate? What do you prefer? Kate, usually. Kate? Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, I'm tr I was trying, but because of COVID, like, they're just so nervous about it and us having to stop production if anything happens. So I'm still holding on to hope because I really want to go to Ireland. And I was going to ask, how many of us have you met? A lot. I mean, I started going you, to conventions. Have you met Ross? Yes, I uh, have. my buddy. Oh my God, he is. Let he's... me turn on a light because it's getting darker out here and I think that's why. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. He's one of my dear friends. Um, I started going to conventions about three or four years ago maybe and gotcha but like that I, I don't know i know you joined the show i'd say within the last year or two and i don't know with covid if you've yeah. been to many conventions no but i actually just did my third in-person convention uh this past weekend in where the fuck was i uh rhode island and ross was the one who actually introduced me to the convention world um because I was like, I would love to do it. But the thing is, I've done virtual conventions uh, because of COVID. Mm. You know, my character came out in April of uh, either last year. Yeah, so it was like the height of COVID and uh, nobody was doing conventions. So I just did my third one. And it's been so cool to get to talk to people and get to know. You know, I always tell the, the, the fans, I think a lot of people forget about this. A lot of celebrities and stuff. I'm, I don't consider myself a fucking celebrity, but... What I see from a lot of celebrities that they forget um, that we wouldn't have jobs if it wasn't for the fans. Hmm. So you owe them to be present with them and you owe them to be there for them. Genuinely, with any of the Walking Dead conventions that I've gone to or any of the cast, every single person that I've met, I'm like, yep. okay, no, they're the nicest motherfucker I'm going to meet from the show. They win. And then you go and you meet someone else and they're even... Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's it's just, it's so lovely to see that you don't, that you guys, like, you, you give a shit. You know what I mean? You actually Absolutely. care. Absolutely. And especially now, with it being the last season, like, 
Mm. You know, somebody explained this to me. I think it was Josh McDermott that the number one person on the show, um, because we have call sheets, and the number one obviously used to be Andrew Lincoln. Mm. But what Josh explained to me is that the number one person on the show should set the tone for everybody else. And from what I heard, Andrew set a tone of respect and kindness and hard work. And so I think everybody followed suit with that. And, you know, we're all here for each other. And, you know, they've been on the show for much longer, but it's still... Maybe we should start the interview because maybe this stuff... Yeah, I just... That thought a second ago crossed my mind yeah. about, like, meeting fans and stuff. Hang on, I'm just going to turn down this light because I just realized how fucking white I look. Um, you gotta, You got to teach me your makeup skills. Your makeup is amazing always. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. It's true. It's just, I love glitter. I love glitter and anything that sparkles. And if you can put it on your face, I'm like, slap it on there. We need to glow. I get off topic kind of easily. So I have a little oh, list. Too. Oh, we're, we're fucked then. We're never going to get to no, this. it's going to be great. It's, that's why it's going to be even better. So with the role like princess, I mean, obviously getting, getting the news that you've actually got the role and it's yours is huge. You always remember where you are and who you were with. But who was the first thing that you got to tell that you got the role and what was the response? Um, I was getting emotional thinking about this, but, uh, you know, I worked so hard for this role. I worked day in and day out. I didn't leave my apartment for like two weeks because I was just so in love with the role. And I was like, nope, I'm going to I want to make it make this audition great. I really want to do it justice. And everybody would call me like, where are you? Where are you? Let's hang out. I'm like, no, I I don't need to hang out with anyone. I'm just going to work my butt off for this. Um, so my agent and my manager called me together and they were like, you got the part. And I just fell to my knees and I started crying I can imagine. because, you know, I have been, you know, I'm not very religious, but I have been praying day in and day out. I was like, I know this is going to be good for me. I know the other options I have might not be good for me emotionally. And I've grown so much emotionally that I don't want to backtrack and I need light in my life. And, mm. and this is going to bring that. And then immediately I called my mom and my dad. Those are the people I always call <laughs> immediately. And it was, I don't know, it was just like one of the most beautiful moments of my life. I think that's absolutely adorable. And it tells a lot as well of, about you as a person that the first people you call would be your parents. Yeah, they've always supported me very much. And, and you know, I'm originally a writer and they've always supported me throughout that which I'm very thankful for because not everybody has that mm. so I see what a blessing that was and and I'm always trying to like show gratitude to them for for being there for me in that way and I, I know especially just to get off topic just for a second when you do go into the arts in any way like that if it's writing or acting or directing or producing whatever it can be a kind of tough thing to explain to like your family or your friends especially right. if you're trying to make a career out of it so the fact that like you had that support absolutely i mean i remember being at dinner with my best friend and her mom and her partner and i told her i'm gonna be an actor someday and her mom said to me she started laughing and she said to me yeah well when i come visit new york i'll see you bumming in the streets and i'll come say hi i was like okay come see me <laughs> you know i had a lot of people um doubt me and a lot of rejection in my life mm -hmm. um because of my ADHD hyperactive disorder and um but it just propelled me to keep moving forward and you know once you move forward you don't wish I don't wish those people any harm I just wish the blessings and I hope that they don't treat anybody else like they treated me you know I grew up in Puerto Rico so that was back in Puerto Rico and I get to represent uh, a strong Hispanic woman mm -hmm. um tough Hispanic woman on who's smart on television and that is just such a gift yeah I can't imagine to be that kind of inspiration and to be that to be that somebody on screen that, that little girls or little boys whatever would look up to and go right. oh my god like me you yeah know? exactly exactly um but yeah getting back to princess um it's so obviously the walking dead we're going we're on the 11th season now but when you joined I think it was in you would have been in your 10th season yes. so for a show that's that well defined, both like with the fan base and with the actual actors, what was it like joining so late? Was it scary? Um, it was absolutely scary, but I just came in 
you know, with my head down in terms of like having respect for the establishment and the universe of it. Um, and I just came ready to work. But the truth is, everybody was just so kind to me on set at the studio immediately. They just welcomed me. And that is a testament to the fandom. And that is a testament to the actors and the creators of the show. And it really, I know it's going to sound cliche, but it really is a TWD family. Um, they just welcomed me with open arms. I think the first person I met was Norman. And I was so nervous because you see him on TV and he's so tough and yeah. so serious. So I'm like this and... And I'm like, oh, God. He just gave me a hug. And he was super, super nice. He's a very, very kind and, and welcoming person. So once I passed that, I was like, okay, I see how how things go here. And, and I'm ready to do it. So, yes, it was scary. But they made it so that, you know, Josh McDermott, who plays Eugene, and... Eleanor Matsura, who plays um, Yumiko, and Kari Payton, who plays Ezekiel, they all took me out to dinner before my fa first day of shooting. Oh. Before they even met me, they wrote to me, uh, I think it was on Instagram or via text, I don't remember, but they said, we would like to take you to dinner just so you can, we can meet, and, and I did, and it was just so nice. That's so, oh my God. I mean, so that I didn't have to come in like, oh God, I don't know these people. You know? Like the new kid at school that you don't know where to yeah. sit, you don't know where to stand. Yeah. Um, I, I met Carrie at a convention years ago and I, I got to do this kind of thing with him. I got to interview him and he's, I don't know why, but like he's someone that like, kind of like with Norman, you'd be a kind of bit like nervous to talk to or to, to right. be around. And he's just so lovely. Sweetheart. It's just, it's lovely to hear that that kind of carries on behind the scenes as well. Um, Absolutely. But kind of like with Ezekiel, a little way, with Princess, a lot of, at least first impressions, a lot of first impressions weighed on the outfit. So what right. was it like getting suited and booted and putting on the costume for the first time? I felt like a little girl, like so excited, like it was Christmas for me. Um, every time I put on another layer of it, because she wears a lot of stuff, mm. she has like three necklaces, earrings, um, a flannel, a vest the pink jacket yeah. the, the jeans the boots um every time i got another part of it i just felt like a kid on christmas like if you see photos that they took of that day i'm like this yeah just so excited which is just like the character too and i i thought like the drawings um in, in the comic books were so awesome that i was just excited to get into it i was so pumped I think as well, like you said, with the comics, with it being, with you already kind of having the visual and already, did you read the comics before you went in? Yeah, I so I started reading them as soon as I like got the call back. So I guess having that, being able to kind of feed off that helped as well. Absolutely. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, um, Princess and I are very similar. I'm much more calm right now in my life. But uh, when I was a kid, I was just like her. And I think she's growing up. I think you see it in the, you know, when you see her in that first episode and she's like, oh my God, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> and, and now you see her grown into a community and much she's more serious and uh, concerned about Ezekiel's health. And you can tell that she's growing, you know, and I, I wanted to portray it that way. She still has her wacky, mm. you know, in her child life. But, uh, but yeah, I think she's growing up a little with. I think in a way as well with characters like that with with characters that are larger than life and loud and kind of crazy mm -hmm. I think they need to put down roots more than anything and I think the princess kind of she she got to do that with the group and I think that probably is why she right. does kind of blend a little bit more and she's not as because like when when she first popped up on screen like it was a lot it was like whoa she is yeah. here <laughs> Um, yeah, she's, she's a lot. I, I loved watching the progression of her, but I think for pretty much any viewer, her kind of big aha moment would have been Splinter. So it would have been the right. that whole episode. Dude, I it's been a long time since I've seen a character absolutely just smack me in the face as she did in that episode. Like, it, I was speechless, seriously. Um, Thank you. 
but like it was so it didn't make to me it did, like maybe that's just me it didn't make any sense until it did and then it was like oh holy shit okay but for a scene like that and for a story like that and, and the weight that that brings how do you get yourself there emotionally and how do you come out of it then at the end of the day right well you know thank you for saying those kind words i really appreciate it um well i've gone through depression and anxiety and again adhd so for me it was just tapping into those moments in my life you know they're very easily accessible inside me so it's about like grabbing those moments and going back to them emotionally to then do it justice for those people who are still suffering from these things um, we all suffer from these things in very different ways. Like anxiety manifests in itself in many different ways in different people. So, you know, that's just one interpretation of how it manifested in this character. But I really just went back in my life and I thought about moments that in my childhood that were hard and lived through them again. As hard as that is, because, you know, when all of us, all of us who have had trauma in our lives, going back to recounting those moments is is very hard. And with time, you see it in a different way. But that's that's what I did. I just went back to feeling like that little girl. Well, I can't imagine how hard that must have been. But thank you for giving that to the thousands and thousands. Because I know the thousands of people that watch that and could connect, they could click. Right. You know, and they could relate in, in whatever way, no matter how abstract or abstract or direct. That means a lot to me. And people, you know, in the convention that I just started doing, when, when somebody comes up and mentions that episode, and, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I want to start crying. I'm like, no. Because, <laughs> you know, they tell me, like, you know, I've, I've been through this, and I just wanted to thank you for, you know, and I want to thank the writers, too, for having the courage to write that. Mm. and the courage to put that out there because I think it's very important that we continue to have this conversation. It is, and I think that it's a, it's a topic and it's a kind of area that a lot of a lot of writers would shy away from because right. either they don't want that, they don't want to portray it, or they don't know how to go about it, but to put it on screen and to give people something to relate to and to look at and go, oh right. my God, you know? So, yeah, again, right. thank you so much for that. And it must have been excruciating to draw on or to touch on yeah, past. It, it was but I but I think it was really important that I did that and uh, shooting that episode was I think the best week of my life you know even though I was exhausted because it was non-stop because I'm mm. basically in every scene it was exhausting it was day in and day out uh, it was the best week of my life and that was that shot in that was shot during COVID right it was like during the strict yeah. the super strict restrictions yeah, so a lot of people get mad because there weren't any other characters in it, or so, some people get mad about that, or there weren't enough zombies in it, or in a fight, but you always got to put in perspective that we were all literally, in a way, risking our health and our lives to bring some content to the fans that we love so much, because um, mm. we didn't really know, like, at that point, like, there was no vaccine, it was still in development, um, yeah. that was October last year. So it's been a year and a year ago, you know, we didn't know what was going on. So, but we were all just happy to be back at work and to see each other. Um, but yeah, that was a COVID episode. Like when, like when lockdown did start and when everything did start happening, I think a lot of people just accepted that like movies, shows, everything was just going to be postponed, that there just wasn't. Right. So like the fact that you guys did the bonus episodes at all, to me, was a surprise. And I like I said it even through videos or live streams or whatever, that the fact that you managed to find a way around safely, because to be fair, that is the most important thing. You know what I mean? That, right. you, that you could get through it safely. It was incredible. And especially, you know, some of us are very young, but some of us are older and some of the people in the crew are older. So, you know, keeping them safe yeah. was a... You know, it wasn't just about ourselves or be like, oh, I don't want to get COVID. It was more like, you know, I was living with my parents at that point because COVID was happening. So I wanted to take care of them just in case. And they wanted to be there for me in case I got sick. So you started thinking about that and other people. Um, but we managed to do it and we managed to do it safely, which I'm very thankful for. 
because of the protocols they put in. I can't imagine all the pressure because both of my parents, <laughs> both of my parents are frontline workers, and for the last, I would say, backbone to two years, I have been a shut in. I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything for them. You know, so right. so I get it. I get that kind of added stress of I can't be the one to either bring it home or bring it into work. But yeah, so from scenes like that to your kind of more eccentric intro introduction and the larger than life side, what kind, what type of scenes do you like filming? Do you like the kind of up close, gritty, or the more extravagant? Um, I think I like the more up close kind of gritty. Um, of course, the extravagant stuff is fun and everything, but uh, I think after Splinter, we have seen a new side of her. Hmm. And as an actor, I want to show that new side. Of course, like I said before, she always have her wacky moments and stuff, but uh, but I want to show like where that comes from. And we saw that in Splinter. Um, hopefully, we'll see a little bit more of it soon. And uh, yeah, I think I like more like the vulnerable up close and personal gritty scenes so we talked about a little bit a while ago about conventions and stuff but like when princess did come into the show it was it was huge and it was in your face and right. everyone had something to say now from my experience Absolutely. it was it was mostly positive people were like who the fuck is this you know yeah, yeah. um but then you know with the with the episodes that followed and with all we've seen of her a lot of people have been talking so what's it been like for you to have this constant like influx of comments and and feedback well you know um some people don't like the character and that's okay you know it's uh i respect their opinion too and um you know you try you don't read those i mean mm -hmm. you know it's like critique like you read the ones that you can learn from and go forward with but the ones that are just mean it's just like you don't even know me like you know what i'm saying yeah and a lot of people say a lot of stuff hiding behind a laptop or like a keyboard mm. but when they see you in your face they're not they they're like oh i never said that it's like my dude it's just like high school yeah you know are you gonna let the the bullies get to you, or are you just going to be like, dude, whatever. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, most of the, all of those people never even met me. You don't even know where I'm from. You don't even know who I am, where my heart is. Like, so you just, like, the people who re rejected me when I was a kid, you just send them blessings and, Move on. you know, when, when somebody taught me this the other day at a convention, and he said, when somebody says, something bad about you it's a reflection of them it's something that they're feeling about themselves and they're trying to bring somebody else down with it so you know, what are you going to do if you stop every time somebody told you no or every time somebody told you you're weird you're strange you're awkward <laughs> you wouldn't do anything yeah my kind of outlook on things is you're always going to be too much for someone you'll be too loud yep. or too quiet too big too small whatever so but yeah how have you found the love and the constant like i relate or i oh that's that's just been beautiful and um it really has been a blessing like i said before when when somebody at a convention mentions that episode and they mention that they've been through something similar we always end up crying both of us <laughs> you know the, the the person and i always end up crying um because i've been through that i go through that um it's a day-to-day -day battle it's it's one day at a time. So when somebody is able to speak about these things because they saw that or because they felt inspired to be able to speak to their families about this topic, yeah. or it has created a conversation in a family watching the show, that for me is is all I can ask for. You know, what more can I ask for than to like inspire people to have truthful conversations with their families about what they're going through? especially with TV shows, because it's straight into homes. You know what I mean? It's going right, straight to TVs. Right. So yeah. where, what better place to start a conversation like that? But um, speaking right. of like kind of relating and starting conversations, if like obviously over the last year or two years, I guess, whenever, whenever you started um, getting into the role, if you could 
go back to just before you got the yes and give yourself one piece of advice for for whatever for for you personally for the journey right. would you or would you let it play out uh, i mean at this point i let it play out but uh if i if i could say something i think i would have said just keep going keep trying you know that's what i would want to tell my younger self all the time don't give up because there's so many you know i had a cu- couple of moments in my life where i just wanted to die and uh just be out of this world x myself out of this world and uh there were really dark times where i got pretty close to that and uh and i'm just want to thank myself and give myself a hug um i just want to thank myself for sticking it through just thank myself for to, that i kept going because i wouldn't be here today if i had stopped you know I think when you reach that point of like it's not even necessarily happiness but contentness that if you could go yeah. back that cuz like I've I don't I think I've gone through bouts of depression and whatnot but there was definitely times like that where I was like no that's it I'm I'm done I'm but done yeah There's certain points I think that you could pinpoint in life that was just pivotal for whatever reason be it you met someone or you know you did something right. or like with you the role that led to this, that led to that, that led to the other, um, but that you did keep going and that you're here and you're, you're touching lives all over yeah. the world. I, I appreciate that. Let's do a moment for anybody who's going to watch this and for you where we hug ourselves. Group hug, big group hug. <laughs> yeah. I dude, I awesome. already know. I already know. I, cause I, I've done a few of these in the past and my, I never tell my viewers when I'm doing it. Just, I'm very anxious. And I'm like, if it doesn't happen or if, if it, you know, I don't want right, to, right. I don't want to speak it and then it not happen. So I just know my viewers is going to be going ape shit. But Yay. yeah, like that, to, to talk about things that actually that have weight and that I know, I know a lot of my oh. viewers because we talk about stuff like this as well. Um, right. That I mean, the show. Sorry, sweetheart. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I mean, the show talks about those things. Hmm. You know, we're talking about a show where people are constantly dying or ending their lives, you know? So to find hope in that darkness, um, I think part of Princess is that light. You know, she doesn't, if you saw episode seven um, of season 11, she doesn't want to let Ezekiel die because he's being stubborn, Yeah. you know? And uh, so this, this show lends itself for us to have these conversations about death and how fleeting it is, how fleeting life is. Mm. So it makes sense that we talk about those things. Yeah, and I, I think that back when it started, it was like um, zombies, apocalypse, end of the world, but then it, it changed and it, it is like what everyone says about it. It's about the people and the human, the humanity and the stories that make you want to watch it. I don't think, it's it's my favorite show ever. So like, I'm not knocking it, but I don't think anyone tunes <laughs> in for the zombies anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, you're there for the characters and the people. I mean, the zombie fights are always fun. Yeah. You know, they're always awesome because the, the art department does such a great job with it. But it really is a show about humanity and mm. and how we move forward after loss. And it's 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 funny just because, like, with the last year, even, like, the strongest, the, what presumably the strongest people that I would have looked at and thought, no, they're unshakable. I've seen them shaken to yeah. their core. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And it's, it's just it's funny with this show in particular because I, I even know myself... I was kind of sensitive to what I was consuming, you know, movies and music and shows, and I was kind mm-hmm. of only letting light in, you know? I just, I needed the, yeah. the light and the airy. But the show was still that for me, even though it's right. it's about the end of the world, the apocalypse. <laughs> and again, I had this kind of conversation with my viewers where I was like, listen, this is rhetorical, don't answer this, but am I just fucked <laughs> in the head or is this like a comfort? You know, so the fact right. that, again, it could just be a comfort for people, even though... It deals with such such weight and such heaviness. Right. But yeah, speaking of COVID and lockdown in the last year and everything going to absolute shit. Did you... Did, oh, well, it did has. I mean, it has. No, you're, <laughs> you're absolutely right. Um, did you jump on the banana bread, I'm going to learn to bake trend? Um, I baked with my mom, mm-hmm. but I don't think we ever baked banana bread. I don't think we ever baked bread at all. 
Um, well, I still don't know what we, banana bread is. I just know people went nuts into making it. It's I. It's a very American thing, I yeah. believe. Um, not so much a Puerto Rican thing. So I've tried it. It tastes really good. But uh, no, I cooked with my mom. She taught me a bunch of stuff. Um, and I started working on some music of my own. So I've been working on that. What else have I been doing? Can we be expecting uh, an album or an EP or anything? Yes, but I don't know when. I, I got to... I gotta let go of my fear and release it into the world. Um, but I'm working on it slowly. You know, when you try something new, it's always it's always terrifying. I've been working on that and I've been working on my play, which is coming up. Um, it's a play that I wrote and I'm acting in and it's gonna happen in DC, in Washington DC in April of next year. And so I've been working on that and trying to turn it into a movie. Shit! Big you moves. Know, just... <laughs> okay. Damn, I'm here. Did you bake any bread? And you're like, no, but I wrote a play and a movie and some music. <laughs> oh my god. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It takes it takes time and it takes courage. That's what I'm lacking lately. Mm. I, I have to really sit down with myself and and really ask myself why am I so afraid? Um and so I can pinpoint that and just battle it. Smack it out of the way and on you yeah, go. Get out of here. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you are kind of I don't even I think is there a level above triple threat? You sing, you write, you act. So what 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 kind of media in like particular do you draw most influence from or inspires you to want to sit down and pour your time into something? Mm. I think music I think listening to music music has been what has what drove me to writing um, and in a way what drove me to acting music has always been just such a straight channel into feeling something and like a quick one and once you hear the first chords of a song it's like you're transported into that world if you allow yourself and if you want to so I think music is is my biggest inspiration and when it comes to music, what comes first for you? The lyrics or the melody? I think lyrics. Is that because of lyrics. your background in poetry? Or because... Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, I'm just... Uh, I'm obsessed with words. So, lyrics, definitely. I mean, it, listen, you can have a song that has a beautiful, soft melody. And the lyrics are like terrible yeah. so then it just defeats the purpose but if the lyrics are great and you know if the lyrics are great the music doesn't even have to be that great for me that's the exact same outlook that i always took when it comes to music or bands it's always i was always that one bitch that would buy the cd because i wanted the lyric bo booklet do you remember oh. back when you buy cds Hell yeah. and then all the lyrics yeah. would be printed i would put yeah. more weight in that than the actual songs that was Jagged Little Pill for me, Alanis Morissette. Do you I, remember her music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you never heard that album? No, I have, I have. I just wasn't expecting that to be a name that was going to come into conversation today. There it is. Dude. But that was that was an album that I read all the time. Like, the lyrics on it. All the time. That album was, like, partly saved my life. You didn't expect me to say that? No, it's just I... <laughs> like... I've made a living out of like TV shows and movies. I do reviews and reactions and stuff. I love right. media. But for me, my first love always was and always is music. Yeah, I went to like my first show at 11 and since then have straight up like I've gone to New York just for concerts and come home like the day after yeah. from Ireland. So like just, I don't know, just to hear <laughs> someone talk about music that way. Well, oh. Alanis is supposed to do a... Uh, uh, she was doing a world tour because, but because of the Delta variant she stopped it but she's doing it in Dublin she's doing the 25th anniversary of Jagged Little Pill so we should go she's coming to Dublin? yes later on that is definitely something that I would look into I know um, at the moment there's I think Ed Sheeran and a few others have just announced for next year and like everyone was cautiously waiting to see if they would right. you know what I'm saying but like tickets have yeah. been sold out and it's going ahead, so like more and more announcing it. I didn't know that she even had a tour coming up. Yeah, well, we'll talk about it so we can go. Or if you even if you come over for the t if you can swing it for the tattoo convention. 
I know. I know. I'm Dude, fine. that would have been sick. Although I'm the Fingers last person. Crossed. I'm the last person you want to take to a tattoo convention. I'm so impulsive. You could say like, get a shamrock tattooed on your butt cheek and I'd be like, Sure. Let's do it. Just to circle back around to the music for a second. When it comes to like, the you know, music, lyrics, melody, all of that. Music is one of the fastest gateways to like past memories and it's like you 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 know you hear a song and you're like suddenly you're 14 years old again crying over some lost love that was never even yours you know what I'm I saying? I know I know. What 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 do you think? I know we said Alanis Morissette, but what do you think is the one song that to this day is just as beautiful as the first time you heard it that never changed? Um, I think it's. It's the salsa song that my dad used to play for me in the car. And that's the song that led me to want to write. And um, it's about this orphan who gets picked up by this old woman. And then he bec becomes this great bullfighter. And it talks about the moment he was born till the moment he dies in a bullfight. And I just remember thinking, like, wow, you can tell a life story in a certain time frame. And something about that fascinated me, and that's when I started writing poetry. So I think that song, it's called El Escapulario. And I think that song will always bring me back to being in my dad's Mitsubishi Diamante. That was the name of the car, Diamante. Mm. And in the heat in Puerto Rico, sweating on the, the seats, <laughs> and, just listen, and just listening to that. It'll always bring me back to that. And I always talk about that song. I, what about never, you? I've never heard it. For me, it's a similar enough story. It would be. You have you heard? I presume you have. Have you heard of the band Lincoln Park? Yeah, they were my mom's absolute favorite band ever. Since I think she was at actually the first show they ever did in England. Wow. She flew over. First time they came over here to do like a UK tour. So I was raised like with heavy like metal music, loud and emotional yes. music from such a young age. And I remember she took me to, um, they played a show in Dublin and she took me and she had a meet and greet and somehow she got me one. And I remember watching her meet them and, and, and seeing this life that I, I've never seen in her before. And afterwards the two wow. of us, just watching her watch them to me is when music became magical. Cause I could see like, whoa, like this can like touch your soul kind of deal. So wow. I'd say it's more of a band rather than a mu well, than a song, but it's it's funny. That I it's, love that story. But I loved music and I loved heavy music because of her. So like that, they'd be Linkin Park blaring or Muse or fucking Queens of Stone Age and all that. And then my dad was into like the Bee Gees. And like, yeah, my dad too. Yeah. <laughs> the next question I have actually is, what's your favorite story that you've heard that stayed with you? It could be a fictional from a movie or a book. Or it could be something someone told you that just left a mark on your soul for whatever reason. Hmm. Oh my God, this is so hard. I mean, it's probably that song, but I'm trying to think of another example. Hmm. I think for some reason, Catcher in the Rye, that book, do you yeah. know that book? Yeah, I haven't read it, but I know it. For some reason, that book really got to me because I, I went to Catholic school and at that point I was in an all girls Catholic school and I felt so outside of that. And that's what that book talks about, about people being phony and, and not real. And uh, it really changed my perspective about just the whole high school world and all of that. Uh, but I'm trying to think of another example. There's a, I think one of my favorite movies is called A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints. Um, and it's one of my favorites because of the story. It's so real. It's so nonfiction. It's, I mean, it's scripted, obviously, but it's it's almost like just watching someone's life. And the director and writer, his name is Dito Montiel. And I'll write it down for you. Yeah. Um, but he wrote it and directed it, and it was about his life in New York, in the city. So I think that story really touches me. What about you? I think you can find a little piece of yourself in whatever it is that you watch or whatever it is that you take in. But right. I'm someone who I love listening to other people. I love like taking 
small little stories and, and tidbits from people and I just kind of collect them. But one of my favourites, I went through these questions with my mom at the dinner table before we started this. And my mom <laughs> said that to me. She was like, what, what, if, what if the question gets put back on you? And I was like, yeah. well, shit, I don't know. I don't have an answer. So I, I, was, going, I was going through trying to think, think of something, anything. And the one thing that, that popped up is I met Carrie. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is, he's such a lovely soul and such a kind guy. But he told me a story of... I think it was just before he had broke into acting or just before any of that stuff had happened. He used to take these like super odd jobs and these things that he knew had no future for him because he didn't want to get comfortable. He didn't want to settle into a job and forget what he loved. And he told me the story of he used to sell, I think it was meat, frozen meat off the back of a van or out of a some kind of meat van. And I was like, okay, so you sold meat. And he was like, yeah, but here's why. And it was because he knew that there was no like promotion, that it wasn't like a corporate job where you get sucked in and and you're kind of stuck. So he stayed uncomfortable in order to go and pursue what he loved. And that, isn't that just so gorgeous? That's amazing. That always stayed at me because at the time I was in, well, I guess I can say it now. I was in a dead end job that I didn't like. And I was like, Uh I I knew that that I didn't want it. And hearing that at that time to like stay uncomfortable, stay pushing until you do what you want to do for a living it just it's stuck and it's something that it's it's a weird little story that i always tell people whenever like they need advice in regards to feeling stuck or feeling a little bit aimless. right well i'm glad kari did that because now we have him ah uh, i don't know i have two or three stories i've heard here today that i think could go on that little list because like i said I, I i do i love hearing because like you know you do a lot of inter- interviews you do a lot of press but you, it's mostly talking about like your character sure yeah right but i want to learn more about like the person and hear the stuff that you don't get to talk about that you do want right. to you know but look right, i've right. kept you for long enough i've kept you blabbing for an hour i i can't I, even i just want to say again i love that we have kari on the show and i'm so thankful to have met him like that's that story is a testament to who he is he's such a strong person sorry i know we were saying bye but i just wanted to say that dude you need to flip that back <laughs> on yourself seriously oh, thank you. Because I, I did, I watched a few interviews and I, I, I wanted to kind of get a feel and not go into it, you know, totally unprepared. And you speak so blatantly and so honestly and unapologetically about stuff yeah. that I know back back when I was a teen, people just, they didn't talk that way. And if I had heard a lot of right. stuff you were saying back when I was younger, it would have meant a lot. So right. you are an absolute, a- dude, you are, your soul, everything about you just shines. So... Thank, Thank you, you so her. much for sharing a little bit of your time and your day with me and my viewers. Absolutely. I, dude, I appreciate my pleasure. the hell. Seriously, appreciate the hell out of you. And yeah. Well, you let me know when this is coming out so I can help promote it and stuff. Yeah, send me a message and let me know. Sweet. I will, I will do that. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much you. for hanging. So that was my chat with Paula. And I have to say, one of the most beautiful souls I've talked to in a long time. You guys would have seen it. She's just, there's this genuine, there's this genuine vulnerability that comes out in her when she speaks and getting to talk to somebody who has such a depth that they're willing to talk about and explore is just, it's stunning. And I, I know I thanked her and I thanked her. (laughs) I've thanked her so many times already, but again, Paola, thank you so much for sitting down and taking the time to chat and to, just you know be and and to tell stories and little anecdotes about things like i said at the beginning i'm still kind of buzzing from it <laughs> it's been like 12 hours and i'm still like twitching from nerves and i'm like it's good it's it's good you did it it's over and i'm still like but i'm just so grateful and so thankful to have had the opportunity to get to chat to her <sighs> so i hope you guys enjoyed uh, as always, the link to my Patreon for more content is down below. I do a bunch of reactions, two uploads a day. Um, I'll also link Paula's like social medias and Instagrams. In- Instagrams. Her social medias, like her Instagram and Twitter and whatnot. And any other link that she wants me to include, I will put down in the Dropbox down below. <sighs> so thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you all soon.